So welcome to our Google Hotel Ads webinar. I briefly move over to our to our agenda that I'm going to talk about. So we're going to talk about, obviously, like the webinar said, about Google Hotel Ads. Uh, maybe to give you a rough outline of what we're going to speak about. The first thing is, obviously, I'm going to show you how the product works and how the product looks like and how you can find uh, uh, the different placements of Google Hotel Ads on Google. Uh, the next thing is also to talk a little bit about the differentiation between AdWords and Google Hotel Ads and what is, what's the difference and where is the overlap. Um, then I'm also going to talk briefly around uh, CPC and commission model. And last but not least, uh, we're also going to look briefly into the new product of Google, which is Book on Google. Uh, the whole webinar is going to last roughly 30 minutes, maybe a little bit longer, depending um, on, on how we move ahead. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to do the questions in between via the chat. Now the recording works again. Perfect. So we're going to start uh, um, looking at how Google Hotel Ads actually looks like and apologize uh, uh, the fact that uh, you always see German screens. But one of the things is uh, obviously my whole Google setup is a German language. Wherever you are in the world, you always see the German language. Uh, you will see your language obviously when you travel. But I think you're very familiar with the look and feel of Google, which is not that different across countries. So regardless of that, I think it's still easy enough to explain. And um, and um, so let's have a look. And um, the, okay, I can speak a little slower. Yeah, no problem. And um, the point is that we are um, looking at uh, different search results. Obviously, the first search that I did was uh, the search for a hotel name. So that in that case is Hotel I-31 Berlin. And that's obviously when people search precisely for your hotel. Yeah. In that case, obviously, you get the search results as normal. You can see at the top where you can see uh, the advertising, which is Google AdWords. So if you click on one of these five links, this is Google AdWords. Yeah. Below that, you can see the natural search results. Uh, and the natural search results are uh, obviously the free results. If someone clicks on one of these links down here, this doesn't cost anything. Yeah? And on the right side, when you are searching for a precise hotel, you always have um, the business entry, yeah, which you can see here on the right side with the pictures and the maps and everything. And here you can already see that there are different prices showing up. And exactly this box that you can see here, this is what we call Google Hotel Ads. Yeah? And that's the way it shows when you are searching for an individual property. Usually what we see is, and we do a lot of AdWords uh, with a lot of hotels, and, and obviously with most of the hotels that we run AdWords with, we are mostly active on branded keywords, so hotel names and, and variation of the, of the hotel name. Um, we see that most of the traffic still comes through the Google AdWords here on top, and that the additional traffic coming in uh, uh, through, the, through the business entry is actually fairly limited. So there's not that much cannibalization and also not that much incremental business. Yeah? So when you do already, when you do some AdWords uh, on the other side, uh, Google Hotel Ads for that kind of search is not really of core interest. It, it doesn't hurt because obviously if you don't do it, if your hotel website, if your official website does not appear, obviously it would only be booking HRS and hotels.com in that case. So it definitely helps to place your website here. But I think Google Hotel Ads is much more interesting if you have a search for example, when you search for Hotel Berlin. So let's do that search. Let's say, oh, we can search for Hotel Barcelona. Yeah. So if you search for Hotel Barcelona, you as well, obviously, at, at the top, you get um, the, different, the different advertising or Google AdWords. And for those advertisings, you're usually not able to kind of like make advertising at all. As an individual property or a small chain, this is far too expensive. So until recently, until Google Hotel Ads was not properly implemented in the search results, it was very, very hard for individual and small properties to actually get traffic out of those generic terms because it was simply too expensive and the ROI too low. Now Google becomes more prominent with um, the different the different hotel websites that you see here. So um, you can see the maps showing up and then you can click, for example, on Hotel Grams Barcelona. Uh, and then you can go into the hotel and then you can see the hotel section. You can see the maps on the right side. So that's a very visual search. 
remembers a lot of Airbnb, if you can see that. And then obviously you have different search criteria, you have different filter criteria, yeah? so you can filter your different hotels, uh, and then you can say, okay, you can change the dates and the amount of people, and you can set various other filters. Yeah? And that way, obviously, Google helps you visually to select uh, the hotel you want. Now, if you are ready to go for one hotel, you could say, okay, let's go on Hotel Grums Barcelona and uh, I want to book this hotel. Yeah? And now you can see all, all of a sudden, okay, you, you show up here and then obviously you see the different, different uh, OTA showing up again on, on, on the hotel website of Grums. Uh, and here obviously is another placement of Google Hotel Ads. But now it's becoming interesting because obviously in the past, when someone was looking for Hotel Barcelona, they got an advertising from Booking.com, they went through Booking.com, and then there was no way back to the hotel website. Now, by Google providing a more sophisticated search on generic key terms, it's obviously much more possible that hotels can actually be found directly on Google, and then, rather than having Booking.com and Hotels.com placing their own website in this environment will help them to gather traffic where they usually were not able to compete to Booking.com and Hotels.com. And obviously for Google, this is a very healthy development as well, because in the past, the big spenders on Google were always Booking.com and Expedia, but now, uh, obviously, Google has a better way of helping clients finding a hotel, and then once they send the click away from Google, uh, there's much more opportunity for them to actually give additional click outs, and the hotel website is obviously a very, very important uh, potential click out for Google, uh, so they can send the clicks to the hotel website and get the money from the hotel directly, rather than dealing with Booking.com and Expedia. And that obviously gives Google more independence, uh, gives them a better product experience, and so on. So that's something you definitely should consider. Yeah? So here, this is obviously your chance to really get together and, and get traffic from, from areas of Google where you previously had no chance of getting, of getting traffic. Uh, so there are obviously various uh, ways of, of searching for hotels on Google, but these are the dominant ones. There are also obviously different uh, usabilities on Google Mobile. Google Mobile is obviously uh, looking slightly different. And uh, on mobile, there's obviously a different user experience. But in the end, you can always say, whenever you see a hotel with a price um, on Google, it's usually powered by the Google Hotel Ads uh, uh, system. So how do you get there with your website? I think that's really one of the crucial questions that you will ask. Uh, to answer the first question, to get there, you definitely need to get your prices on Google. Without having a price feed, Google will not be able to display you. And for that, you obviously need to speak to your booking engine provider or your channel management provider because they are the guys who are having that interface with Google. And if they don't have an interface with Google, it's pretty much impossible for you to get live on Google because there's no interface. Yeah? So if you have a booking engine provider, and depending, the big ones usually all already have uh, interfaces with Google. So in that case, um, it's usually no problem because you can connect um, uh, uh, through them. But this is only one side of the story because that's only the story of actually having the price showing up. But then to actually get the click from Google, so if you click here on booking.com, Booking, obviously, the, the, the link is redirected from Trivago, uh, sorry, from Google to Booking.com. And in that case, if you have your website, this obviously would need to be managed as well. So there is where my shop comes into the game. My shop is basically the provider who is managing that click management on Google to actually buy that click from Google to transfer that click over to your website and also measure in case someone books that you can actually see how many people clicked, how much did it cost, and how much revenue did you make. So, and this is obviously now important because this is different to a classical OTA business. When you are putting your hotel on booking.com, you pay for a commission. I mean, you all know that. On Google and on meta searches like Trivago and TripAdvisor, you usually pay for the click, right? So in case someone clicks on booking.com here, booking.com pays a click to Google. The same case needs to be done by you. And this is now the second part of the story because this is where it becomes quite complicated because obviously there are a lot of opportunities on Google. Yeah? So on Google, again, if you want to show up here and if someone clicks, you can put a CPC, a cost per click. Yeah? So this is now obviously something that is very special on Google because Google has a very sophisticated model. 
Um, I don't want to go too deeply into things because it can become pretty complicated on how it works. But I try to still give you a little bit of an overview on how it technically works and how, what the logic behind it is. Because Google, in the end of the day, says, okay, I am, I'm a marketplace, and I want to place different providers, and then usually the one who is at the top is usually the one who pays most. This is what you might think. But that's not 100% the way it works. There are actually three factors that determine which player is on position number one, which is on two, which is on three, which is on four. Yeah. So that logic behind it is usually based on three factors, as I said. The one is the, the amount of the cost per click, so the amount you're willing to pay. So if you pay 80 cents or one euro or one euro 20. The second factor is, nevertheless, is the price. So if someone is cheaper than someone else, usually this has a positive impact on the cost per click. So if your price is cheaper than, um, than that of Booking.com, you also might have to pay less than Booking.com to appear above them. So, and that's a golden rule on every meta search. You can always say if your price is a few percent lower, usually your cost per click also goes down. So usually our hotels are all not on rate parity. They're all cheaper on the old hotel websites. So for them, that's definitely already saving them a lot of money on the cost per click. There's a third factor, and the third factor that counts in is called rate accuracy. Rate accuracy means if you are showing a rate of, like in this case, 92 euro, and the 92 euro, and you click on it, and then you get to the hotel website, and the 92 euro is not available anymore, but it's now 96 euro, then your rate is not accurate. And that means that Google will penalize you. So if your rate accuracy, meaning your price that you show and the price that you really sell, is not correct, you will get minus points. And that, again, can lead to either the fact that Google will completely take you offline because if the rate accuracy becomes really bad, they might, they might just stop your campaign. Or they simply say, okay, you have to pay more money to be further up because we don't accept that prices are not correct. So, in, so, so to do that, you have to simply pay more. Otherwise, uh, 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 we're not going to show you at all. So that's quite easy so far. Now it becomes more complicated because obviously in the next step, you want to obviously understand, okay, how does it now work with a cost per click? So I try to make it as simple as possible. The way we do it is quite, is, is quite I mean, there are different ways of doing it at the first step, but the most common way of doing it is that you set a base bid. Yeah? So basically you set a base bid of whatever 50 cents. Yeah? Let's assume 50 cents. Yeah? Then we take hotels live and then we let the hotels run. And over time, when we let the hotels run, we can measure the returns because we see how many people click, how much it costs, and how much revenue we generate. And then we can also see on the other side how many clicks, let's say if Google has 1,000 clicks on this hotel and we only got 50 clicks of that 1,000, 950 clicks went to Booking.com and Expedia. So obviously, we want to make sure that we are highly positioned and that we get more clicks uh, from Google than the other platforms. Now, the point is that... that um, by doing that, uh, you can now adapt your bits. And now those bits can, can be adapted on various different channels. For example, you might see that on desktop, your conversion rate is really good and your return of investment is really good. But then you also see that on mobile, your conversion rate and your, and your, and your return of investment might be very low. So what you can do in Google, you can go into Google and you can increase your base bit on, on desktop and you can decrease your base bit on mobile. Basically, that means that you can adjust on a very granular level. So you could say on device, you pay more on desktop, less on mobile, average on desktop, uh, on tablet. On the other side, you can also optimize, for example, by market. So you could say you pay more money in Germany and less money in Spain and very, a lot of money in the U.S. because you know everyone from the U.S. stays three days longer than the rest and for a high amount of money. But you can also say, for example, you pay different CPCs on the average length of stay. So, for example, if you're a holiday resort and people stay for 14 days, you might say for 14 days you're willing to pay a higher CPC than if someone only stays for three days. No? You can also change the CPC based on the checkout date, uh, check-in date. So, if someone checks in on a Monday or searches for a Monday, you pay a higher CPC because you know it's corporate than, for example, on a Friday because you know it's leisure. Yeah? So, you can also make different bits on booking windows. So if someone searches eight weeks ahead, you pay more than someone searches one week ahead or one day ahead. 
Yeah? So all these different ways are giving you a lot of opportunities to change your CPC and to optimize your campaign. And this is what it's really about because in the end, it's all about profitability and we want to get the booking through the website for as little money as possible. So this is exactly where it becomes complicated because obviously if you want to do this on a daily basis, this is something where hotels are usually overwhelmed. And this is exactly where my t shop comes into game because we are the guys who know all about it. We manage the campaigns for you. And the way you do it is you basically just give us the money and you tell us, look, I don't want the campaign to become more expensive than 15 or 18 or 20 percent. And then we can manage the campaign for you. Yeah? But we always do it on CPC. If you have any questions in the meantime, feel free to ask. Otherwise, I'll just move ahead because the next thing is, and some of you might have heard it, that you can always manage um, a Google campaign also on commission. So Google implemented a scheme where you don't have to pay for your click, but you actually can simply pay a commission. That quickly explained. And there are pros and cons between that. Well, so if you pay on a commission basis, this doesn't mean that you actually really do pay on a commission basis. The way it works is that if someone clicks on the hotel website, you get forwarded to the hotel website, and if then someone books, yeah, Google gets, let's say, 10% commission from you. So let's take a simple example. Google sends you 100 clicks yeah, and 1% conversion, so one person books a room. Yeah, and that one person books a room, and in total for 300 euro. And Google gets 10% commission, which is 30 euro, right? So if they send you 100 clicks for 30 euro, what Google does is they calculate the 30 euros back to the 100 clicks so Google knows that effectively they earned 30 cents per click. So Google is always calculating everything back into a CPC. It's called a so-called eCPC. So now the point is, if you pay 10% commission, indirectly Google calculated it down to 30%, uh, sorry, to 30 cents a CPC, and Booking.com is willing to pay 60 cents, that means that your hotel website might drop down on the ranking. Yeah, and Booking.com is basically providing you with, uh, with a higher ranking, and Booking.com is then showing up above you. So now the problem is, you say, hey, I, I'm willing to pay more. I'm willing to go beyond Booking.com. But you cannot go to Booking.com and say, hey, I want to increase my commission. Technically, theoretically, that's possible. But as an individual property, this is very difficult because you're usually within a large portfolio of hotels of your Booking Engine provider or of my hotel shop. And then it's very hard to put one individual hotel 1% higher. So you usually cannot change your commission on most of the providers. This might change in the future to be a bit more easier, but generally speaking, currently, that's a very hard thing to do. So the next problem is that also, even if you were able to do it, let's assume you increase your CPC, uh, you increase your commission from 10% to 11%. Just imagine that would be an equivalent of increasing your CPC from one euro to one euro ten. But maybe that's too much. Maybe you can even increase your CPC from one euro to one euro one, one euro two, one euro three. But the jump from one euro to one euro ten is something far too big. So meaning, if you increase your commission by one percent, if you were working on a CPC model, you could do the steps in a much much slower, in much much slower uh, and and more granular steps. So that's another advantage of cost per click. It gives you a much more granular way of optimizing your campaign. And in the end, it always saves, it always helps you to save money. Yeah, because maybe you save some extra money with commission you wouldn't have saved. Yeah? Next problem is also when you work on a commission model, there's always a risk. Yeah? Because there's one risk that maybe your campaigns are much better than 10%. Maybe, yeah. Um, okay, for the Italian people, I need to speak a little bit slower, I heard again, but um, um, if, what, I'm, what I'm trying to say is um, we need to kind of like uh, understand that if you pay, let's say, 10% on your commission level, then on the other hand, you might have results if you work on a cost per click model and you measure your results, you might say you spend 50 euro on a cost per click, but you make 1,000 euro revenue then it's only 5% cost. But if you kind of like spend 10% commission instead, you would have paid 100 euro on a 1,000 euro uh, rather than 50 euro that you would have spent on a CPC. We have one hotel chain in Germany. They have an average cost on Google Hotel Ads 
around 6.5%. If they had gone on 10% or 12% commission instead, they would have paid far too much. And that's a big problem because they said, hey, no, we don't want to pay 12%. We know that our results will be better than 10 or 12%. So on a cost per click model, for them, we can produce much, much better results. There's another version. It could be that you pay 12% commission on Google, but you don't show up at all. Maybe your website is not on position number two, but it's only on position number eight. And we have a lot of hotels that work on commission that show up very, very low, and they never receive any clicks and no real volume. So those hotels obviously could ha would have to spend more than 12% or more than 10% to get a higher positioning. But it's very hard for them to do it because they cannot really go up. So for them, it's like, okay, how can I, how, I, I'm willing to spend more, but they can't. So again, on cost per click, it's super easy, and you not only can go up in, in, in cost per click, but you can also do the granular level. You can also manage your campaigns on mobile versus desktop versus tablet in different ways. When you work on a commission level and you increase the commission level, the commission level is increased across everything, across mobile, across desktop, across countries, and across all the different uh, uh, optimization steps that I just explained. So what does it mean? It doesn't necessarily mean that, that commission is bad and CPC is good. No, obviously co commission has no risk for hotels, and that's good for you. But there's also a risk that the campaign is either too expensive and or you will not get the volume that you could get. So you also have a risk of losing out. Uh, but on the other side, you don't have the risk of taking the money and spending it on cost per click where you don't know what the result will be. But I can tell you that of our hotels that we work with, that on Google Hotel Ads, 90% of the hotels have very good results. Well, so the risk of losing money on cost per click in our eyes is actually quite low. So the next problem is that obviously uh, you cannot really spend time on doing all those CPC management. And that's exactly where my hotel shop comes into the game. We are the people who are managing those campaigns for you. You tell us what you want in terms of return of investment, and we will try to optimize your campaigns towards that, that, that ROI goal. You don't have to do anything. We do everything for you. Yeah? So you don't have anything to do with the complexity, but usually on most of the hotels we work with, we manage it on a CPC because we know it results can be much, much better. Still, nevertheless, we also might have hotels that we put on a commission model. And again, it's not about good or bad. Commission model has advantages. Cost per click has advantages. But both sides also have disadvantages. So we do have hotels where we put them on commission only and let them run on commission. But the majority of our hotels, we actually run on a cost per click model. Yeah, because we simply see that results and volumes are better. And that's basically where you need to trust us and our expertise, where we know what we do. And then... You, have all, you get all the results in our dashboard, so you get all the numbers in our dashboard anyway, and you can observe it in real time, how the results are, and there's no way that you can lose money because we always have a limit of the money we spend for you, so there's no real downturn. You cannot really lose money even though it's a cost per click. Any questions so far on the, um, on the, on the bidding model? Because I, I don't want to go too deeply into the ways the cost per click works. I just want to make sure that you understand why commission or why cost per click, why there are two different models. One of the main reasons I said Google introduced the commission model was actually because they know that hotels don't understand cost per click. But if you are smart and if you understand what cost per click means, it's usually always the preferred model. And Google also prefers the model of CPC. They simply did it to accommodate to most of the hotels. Good. So far, that's uh, pretty much uh, the fact around the bidding part. And um, now maybe uh, one thing around Google AdWords and Google Hotel Ads. Google AdWords and Google Hotel Ads are pretty much, so far, has been two different products. Yeah? On the one side, you have Google Hotel Ads here, the typical advertising. And on the right side, you see the price ads from Google Hotel Ads. Google, nevertheless, is now about to move these two products together. In the back end, those two products are already within one system. In the front end, what users see, you can see that AdWords and Google Hotel Ads are very close together, 
And you can see even here when you search for Hotel Barcelona, you were able to see yeah, that uh, uh, that in the in the normal uh, let's say search results, yeah, adverts comes on top and ad hotel ads comes below. So in the near future, and that's what Google also tells us, uh, Google AdWords and Google Hotel ads are really moving together, and it will be at some point one algorithm, one cost per click, and one product. In, in let's say influencing each other at least. You know? So this is obviously another big advantage that we say that we have at MyOtest Shop because at MyOtest Shop the way it works is that we do have uh, that we do have uh, uh, the capability of managing AdWords and hotel ads out of one hand. If you're a hotel and you might have an AdWords agency, there are many many AdWords agencies out there, but none of them can manage hotel ads for you because they don't have access to the pricing, they don't have access to your distribution system, and they're usually also not experts on hotel business. No? But we are really experts on hotel, and we can manage both products out of one hand, and that's usually a pretty big advantage uh, for the future for us, because we can obviously uh, make sure that both products uh, work well together and not against each other. And that's a quite important strategic uh, setup for the future. So, just as a reminder, it's Still two different products, but influencing each other strongly, working on one thing uh, basically together, and in the, within the next six to 12 months, there will be a lot of changes coming up. Nevertheless, Google is obviously implementing a lot of different changes. There will also be much more voice search, much more search to chatbots. So that's a very, very interesting development, but this is definitely a webinar for 2019 or 2000 or 2020, but still, you should keep your eyes open to see what's going on. Maybe, last but not least, um, I wanna go back and I need to show you some screenshots to book on Google. Book on Google is a new product from Google that they have live in the US. And that means that you're not leaving Google anymore. They make a price comparison on Google, like you just saw on hotel ads. But instead of actually linking to a different page, you can actually do the booking on Google directly. So you can search your hotel, 1st of December, etc. You can see all the content of the hotel. You can see the different room types. And then you can basically see here on the right side, if you look here, you can select your junior suite and then you can finalize your booking and you can go to the very end of the booking process, guest details, payment, review and book. And that's pretty much everything happening on Google. Nobody comes to your website anymore. So if you ask me if this is a direct booking, I would say no, this is not a direct booking. No, this is definitely no direct booking. This is an OTA booking. Yeah, this is the same like on booking.com and Expedia. The client stays on Google. He doesn't leave Google. And this is a compet competition product to booking in Expedia. The other model that I just explained before with the cost per click, the people click and they come to your website. And on the website, directly with you, they make the booking. Yeah, so the data is with you, the customer is with you, and you paid for the click to come to your website. Yeah? So these are two different business models. The question is, why is Google doing this? Well, I think there can be various speculations. I think it's simply a method of Google to test and see how users accept it. And if I was Google, obviously that would make sense, yeah, because you can compete better with Booking and Expedia, and Google wants to try out if they can do that. On the other side, Google also wants to make money with clicks, which is their core model for the last for the last uh, 15 years. So they basically provide both opportunities. And it's, again, a little bit like with commission versus cost per click. It's the same with Book on Google or Google Hotel Ads. It's basically one product just with different angles. And the way Google works is just testing and trying out what works best. And if you ask someone at Google, they usually never say, okay, we want to do this and we want to do that. They always say we do both and we let it run against each other and then we see which one is more successful. And maybe 70% of the users like the one piece and 30% of the users like the other. Fair enough, and that's the way it goes. It's the same on cost per click and commission. I can tell you on cost per click and commission, we are usually having the experience that on commission, we put very small hotels, hotels with small volume in small destinations, and hotels with big volumes, with in big destinations, with a lot of traffic, we usually manage them on a CPC because it gives you far more possibilities. Well, so these kind of things is something you need to keep in mind. It's never black or white. You can always try and test everything. And it's also our job to help you 
finding the right approach and finding the right model and finding the right, let's say, booking behavior. This is what my attention is there for, to help you kind of like being successful on these channels. Yeah, helping you to have the right ideas, helping you to have the right setup, and helping you also with software to get good results. And that's really what it's all about. So, in the end of the day, yeah, you can see Google is there, and a lot of people say, okay, where are we going with Google in the next years? Because Google has been working on Hotel Finder seven years ago, but now in the last two years, Google put far more attention on the whole thing. We can see that Google is, is going into the destinations. They were visiting us in Germany. We were going to hotels together, and we were looking at hotel revenue managers, looking at their work, and Google people were really with me in the property to see how it works. This is a level of attention that's quite impressive because Google really wants to understand how are the hotels working and how, what do we need to do to get money directly from the hotels rather than having someone like booking on Expedia in between me. And for hotels, this is a great opportunity because if they can really connect to Google directly and surpass booking.com and Expedia, this might be a great opportunity to get more direct business for a lower cost and for a better profitability. So if you consider these kind of things, I think there are a lot of opportunities for you. Yeah? And I think in the next 12 months, there are a lot of things that will change. If you have any questions around that, we have teams in all languages. We have Italian people, Spanish people, German people, French people, and you can call us. We can give you a consultancy call uh, for free. Uh, we can always run you through uh, uh, specific suggestions for your hotels. And then if you're interested, obviously, we can also run the campaigns for you. We do this on a purely success-based model. So in our case, there's also no risk that you have to spend a lot of money on the agency. Uh, we have software in place that makes you be very, very successful in these kind of platforms because to manage complexity like on Google, you need software and you need good people. This is exactly what we provide. If you need anything and if you need any help, please let us know. You can also follow us on Facebook or Instagram uh, to get some further advice and some further uh, information. We're also going to have more webinars in future. So if you want to uh, get more information on webinars, just sign up on our website. Just register our, your hotel. And whenever you register your hotel, you're automatically on our mailing list. Or just contact your local representative, um, and then we are happy to be in touch with you. Are there any more questions from your side? Because from my side, I'm pretty much through. Good. You might be typing, and if not, I will already start closing the call uh, because I know it's weekend and every one of you wants to go home, and half an hour information is quite enough. So, And you see it's quite complex, but it gives you lots of opportunity. So I wish you a lovely weekend. I wish you great success in your hotel, and if there's anything we can do for you, just feel free to contact us whenever you want. Thanks a lot.